Hi, I'm Amy Burval, and these are my true stories of connectedness. A while back, I did uh, one of these for Alan, and I was talking about how there's a niche for everything, and when you put things out there on the web, you never know who's going to like them. And when I was doing my history teacher's music videos, I thought, you know, only history students would love them. But it turns out that one of my songs, the Lady Gaga Bad Romance um, version of the French Revolution, was picked up by a troupe of drag queens called the Bearded Lady Review and performed on Bastille Day in Philadelphia, in the heart of Philadelphia. And I just got a kick out of that because one of our fans... Um, was there and was surprised to see them perform it and posted that online. So I don't know, that's pretty hard to top, but I'm going to try to do that with this list here of uh, nine more things that surprised me about being open. So I've been really into the Gutenberg parentheses theory. Um, I'm not gonna explain it right now, but I did write an ode to this in the in a poem form of course and Lars Ole Sauerberg who invented the theory um, he's out of the University of Southern Denmark was retiring and his protege Thomas Pettit who made it famous wrote me and said hey I'd like to have somebody read this in a beautiful like Irish accents or something uh, could you know would you give your permission and I to me that was super cool that was like wow I can't believe you know I'm this like fangirl and they're asking if they can read my poem. Cool. Another total fangirl moment was, you know, I sketch a lot and it was Andy Warhol's birthday and I did a little Andy Warhol sketch and oh my gosh, Chris Stein of Blondie, my favorite rock group ever in the history of ever retweeted and liked it and did everything and I, I almost fainted I could not believe it so my favorite one of my favorite artists and also my favorite <laughs> my favorite rock group that was that was killer thank you Instagram yay so just to show the power of image a game my daughter and I like to play is we'll watch a tv show something like on the science channel brain games or uh, we're watching this exomunologist David Kipping on the Science Channel and I drew a couple images and posted them on Twitter and he wrote back. And so she gets really excited, she's 10, when somebody that we're actually watching in real time on TV uh, writes back on Twitter because I've sketched them or their concepts. So that's pretty cool. So. I have intellectual crushes, and two of mine are uh, David Eagleman, neuroscientist extraordinaire, and uh, Jason Silva, kind of a philosopher, TV personality kind of guy. And I found out they were going to be at TED Vancouver this year together in the same room, and I could not believe it. So I just put it out there on Twitter can you guys take a selfie together? Because that would be amazing. And they tagged me in it. They took one together and they tagged me in it. It was just the highlight of my, at least my month. <laughs> Speaking of TED Talks, uh, when I taught theory of knowledge in high school, um, we watched a lot of TED Talks. And I would have the students back channel synchronously as we watched them and the cool part was we would find out what the Twitter handles were of the speakers and a couple of times the speakers would actually write us back as we were watching and this blew my students minds away. Um, uh, Doug Rushkoff wrote us I know and John Ronson who is brilliant and did one of my favorite TED talks about uh, strange answers to the psychopath test um, he was kind enough to write my students as well. And it just, it, it just brought a whole new level. I mean, it completely changed their view of, of what school could be. I like to think out loud and either blog or sketch or both, uh, when I'm listening to other people's, uh, podcasts or when I'm reading a book and, Often I'll post these on Twitter, um, and a couple of people like Austin Cleon, a wonderful author and artist, and Scott Bracon, who often writes on creativity, 
have responded um, favored. I mean, they've actually been quite generous in their responses to my work um, and my sketches of their work and have written about me and given me shout outs and things like that. And I, I find that to be really lovely because they don't need to take the time to do that. But I think this is where Twitter in its kind of creative constraints of 140 characters sort of democratizes things because, I mean, uh, it doesn't take much, but it means so much if they do take that 140 characters to give you a little shout out for your work. Like probably most of you, I'm a big fan of Wired Magazine, and one of my favorite authors um, in it is Clive Thompson, who goes by at Pomeranian 99 on Twitter. And I've, I've been a big fan of his work, and he wrote a book called Smarter Than You Think, and we've come to know each other over Twitter, and he was kind enough to actually join a G-plus community that I set up for my students uh, as they read his book as summer reading. And he responded to pretty much every kid in my class, you know, over 60 kids, um, as they read his book throughout the summer through this G-plus community. So this openness of having them, you know, share their thoughts online and, and he could communicate with uh, Google Plus to these high school students. I mean, it was, it was unreal. It was like everything Socrates was afraid of about writing was just blown out the window. I live in Hawaii, which is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And about the furthest place you can get and still be in America is Maine. And at a conference once, I met Wicked Descent Learning on Twitter, a.k.a. Dan Ryder. And he uh, and I decided to get our students together uh, for a project called Remash, which involved visual thinking and poetry and remix and mashup. And it was the coolest thing. And it involved, you know, Twitter and involved... Um, just linking these kids together from the farthest reaches of, of, of America. And it was, thank you, Internet. Yeah, thank you. One of the really cool things that happened this year um, with my sketching was when I found out about the Je suis Charlie incident and the hashtag, I immediately sketched my response because it really struck a chord in me. And I wanted to make it um, supportive of, of artists and of free speech. And I put it out there and I was, you know, it was in the morning in Hawaii and so many people from all over the world expressed their support um, and their appreciation that I did that drawing. And I was really surprised actually. And finally, an Italian magazine asked if they could use it on the cover. And I was really shocked because everybody else they used was a professional um, cartoonist. And I was the only one that wasn't, and mine was on the cover. Um, but it, it was just, you know, it was heartfelt. So there you go. So this last part is a bit serious, but it happened to me just the other day. And I was feeling kind of low in a, in a blue funk and all of these people from just various ties across the internet contacted me in various ways uh, DM on Twitter Skype email it was like they just knew and they really picked me up and that's kind of how connectedness works um, sometimes the people that you really need are the people across two oceans or the people across the ether, not necessarily the people living in your same geographical vicinity. And I really appreciate that. And that's what connectedness means to me. Thank you, Alan, for this opportunity. It was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoy it.